Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts once again with the book of Revelations chapter 3 and now we're moving down to verse 14 and on until we reach Pat's two cents. Yeah. Okay. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, hmm. that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Now, let me put in my little two cents here. He's not talking about silver and gold. He's talking about holiness, righteousness, all the things that carry the right weights of high treasure and, and worthiness where it comes to the ways of God, the things of God. The kingdom of God. Okay, let me go back. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with I salve, that thou mayest see. Okay. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You know what's scary about the lukewarm thing? We think sometimes it's just about uh, committing sin, blatant sin, and having no, having our conscience seared as if with a hot iron. It's it's uh, when something's burned really badly, and it begins to heal. There sometimes is an area of numbness. It's an area where there is no growth. There is no hair there. There, is, there are no new skin cells that look pretty like the rest of the skin. It is an actual uh, deformed appearance. It, it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't match the rest of your skin. Well, sometimes that's what happens with our conscience. We're going to work from our conscience to the areas of carelessness to deal with lukewarm. I want you to hear what happens to us as individuals. This is Pat's two cents deal that we're dealing with right now. Woo, I think I'm having a hot one here. Woo, we doggy. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to be very careful how we deal with the things of our lives right now. There are those of you who have a relationship that for you, pleasing the opposite sex in your relationship carries more weight to you than pleasing your God, which is in heaven. Some of you watching TV carries more weight because it's entertaining, it's fun, it's invigorating, it's hypnotizing, hypnotizing. You got me hypnotized. Look at the faces that watch TV sometimes. It's really comical how dumbfounded we look when we're watching TV. But count how many minutes, how many hours we spend in the Bible. We are all guilty of that. I'm including myself. We're all guilty of it. But if the television 
becomes your God, your idol. You come home from work. You make sure you don't let anything get in the way of your TV program at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And oh, you got to watch that one. Or you have your tape videotaping it so you don't miss an episode. Some of you women, notorious for the soap operas. Oh, yeah. But if somebody asked you to quote a scripture in the Bible, uh, hmm, well, now let's see now. Well, now let's see. Hmm. Jesus what? Yeah. Listen. But you could quote the script. You could quote the, the, the jingles on the commercials. You could sing with them, quote with them, talk with them, rap with them, whatever they're doing. You're really into that. That's got you consumed. You're totally engrossed in it. It's got you, baby. But does God have you like the TV has got you? That's another area of being lukewarm. Look at how you conduct your friendships. The Bible says forgive. And if you don't forgive those that trespass against you, the Bible says Jesus will not forgive you before his father. Wow. That's kind of a heavy duty demand there, ain't it? But guess what? Some of you will say, well, God just got to understand. God ain't got to do nothing. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not a simple request. It's a command. Your forgiveness is conditional on your willingness to forgive. Forgiving doesn't mean you smile in their face and say hi and then you walk away. Forgiveness means you restore the whole relationship. That's called total reconciliation. If you're not willing to do it God's way, you are borderlining that lukewarm thing because when you deal with your feelings, what's important to you, and God's feelings, what's important to him, and you have a problem giving priority to God, you are on the fence, baby. You are lukewarm. There are so many ways to be lukewarm. Your man, your woman, wants you to spend time with them tonight. But tonight is Bible study. Or tonight you have made an appointment to go to someone's house and pray with them. Someone who's sick and shut in, a widow, a widower, someone who's alone, a senior citizen, a crippled child, whatever the case may be, they're looking forward to you coming over. But you are really looking forward to being with your lover. Yeah. So y'all can kiss and Hold each other and do what lovers do. Yeah. So what do you do? You get on the phone and you make a polite call. Uh, is it all right if I come tomorrow night? You're disappointing someone. You're not living up to your word. You put your word out there. And you're going against your word. That's very important to God. Your word should always be your bond. Ministry should always come before, you know. Mm -hmm. And what do you end up doing? You end up moving further and further away, getting colder and colder and more nonchalant about the things of God because you got a hot and fiery relationship going and you just can't get enough of that funky stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
That's lukewarmness. That's being lukewarm, being caught between two opinions. You're really neither here nor there, but you're more there than you are here. And God knows it. God's got competition now. And you know what God says about that? He said, I am a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So while you got time, you better lay that God aside and get back to your ministry. Don't let your ministry fall through the cracks. Don't let those loved ones that are counting on you be disappointed again and again and again. Because after all, you got needs, you have desires, and you want company. Don't get to the point where you love your money so much. And you know you could go on vacation and you got the money to go. And you haven't even decided where to go. You can go two or three times a year. So you want to go one more time. Listen to this. But you just heard about somebody who couldn't pay their rent, couldn't pay their house payment, didn't have food in their house. They had a real tragedy. Their husband or their wife died. Bam, income cut in half. And guess what? You're sitting up there with a pocket full of vacation money. But you ain't letting anything get in the way of that. So... That's got to ride, baby, because you got needs. You got to get away. Hey, anybody can understand a hard-working person like you has got to get away. You're not denying yourself as Jesus required. You're not preferring others above yourself. There's a scripture that says, how can you see another person's need? I'm paraphrasing. How can you say a, see a person that's in need? And you say, oh, you know, be blessed. I'll pray for you. Go on. Go on about your business. How dwelleth the love of God in you when you have the power to meet that need and you refuse to for your own little selfish reasons? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? But lukewarm, neither here nor there. I'm going to take care of number one. Oh, well, somebody will help them. That'll be nice. I really am sorry for them. But I got somewhere I got to go. Yeah. I worked hard for the money. Sorry, Charlie. How dwelleth the love of God in you? Lukewarm. Doesn't matter. No biggie. Not that big of a deal. Hey, whatever.